this is Dr. Stan DeCoven, and uh, I'm just honored to be able to start a series of teaching on a book written by myself and Andrew Hopkins, the brilliant worship leader and brother, friend, the graduate of Vision International University, on open heaven. And uh, we want to make this book available to you at a reduced price. We're providing the video teaching at no cost to you as a part of Walk in Wisdom, Wednesdays in the Word, and, uh, and also through uh, Andrew's webpage as well. So, hey, I, you know, if you love this teaching, if, you're, if this is something that's really a blessing to you, please, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit Facebook and all that kind of stuff so that we can continue to grow this area of our educational and training ministry. When we talk about open heaven, I mean, I, it was something that, that started in my heart many, many years ago. The, the assumption that, you know, that I heard from so many people is that in order for heaven to open, you, you got to be pretty special. Uh, you got to be uh, prayed up. You need to worship for probably at least an hour or two. And maybe if you do it right, heaven will open. His, God's presence will come and all will be well. We'll see signs, wonders, miracles, etc. And, and just a, a question, which often happens with me, came to mind, which was, I wonder when heaven closed. Because, you know, when Jesus came, essentially, one of the things he said, and we, we, let me just read this to you very, very briefly in, in John chapter 5, or chapter 1, I'm sorry, verse 51, it says, he's, he's speaking to Nathaniel, and he says, truly, truly, I say to you, you shall see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So the question came to mind was, I wonder when heaven closed. Now I'm convinced that especially over those of us that believe, I mean, we are believers in Jesus Christ, heaven is open. Heaven is never shut since Jesus came. And heaven is not going to shut. In fact, heaven is show, slowly, little by little, coming down. The kingdom of God is, is in the earth, and it's expanding and will continue to expand until the earth is covered with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So I began to do a little exploration, and I asked Andrew to do the same thing on open heaven. I mean, his perspective is more as a worship leader. Uh, how do you uh, not open heaven, but how do you function, as it were, under an open heaven through worship? And I think you'll, you'll find both in his teaching and, and in the chapters of the book that uh, he wrote, it's really inspiring. But, you know, my focus, again, is more the theological, if you will. It's, you know, if we do live under an open heaven, I mean, what's it matter anyway? What's it matter? What's it matter? But I think it matters a lot, our perspective, how we see how God is moving today makes a big difference in our daily lives. Let me just start by sharing a few thoughts with you by way of introduction. That's what this session is about today. It's kind of an introduction to the book and to the, to the first chapter. It's a, the focus of, of church, unfortunately, has primarily been maintenance rather than the purpose for which it has been established, which is to see the kingdom of God expand in the earth. A maintenance focus is, uh, is really more focused on consumerism than it ultimately is on servanthood. Fear, in many ways, more than faith, self versus a true Christ-like identity. One of the things I find today is that people are more and more focused on what can the church provide for me, not what can, can I do to serve others within the church or into the community. We do know that about 90 to 95% of all money that's raised in a local church is spent on the Sunday morning service, the event of church where primarily people come and sit and observe the leadership and the professionals 
worship and preach and teach and exegete scripture and do all of the things that we as individual believers should be doing ourselves on a regular basis. Thus, in many ways, church has become more theater than it has been the gathering of the saints for the purpose of worship, instruction, so that we can influence the culture around us, our basic vocation. Well, you know, in this teaching, I want to really focus on seven primary things, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them, but I want to look at what it means ultimately to be a new covenant minister, being in the new covenant, being in the open heaven. What does that mean? And we're going to look very briefly at that, what it means to be commended, what is means to be covenantal, to be condemnation free, to be following the cloud of God's glory, to be Christward in our focus, changeable, so that we're flexible in that sense, remembering that we are already competent to fulfill God's purpose because of God's spirit living in us. Now, the scripture that I'm focusing from, this teaching, is really from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and I won't take time to read it because you're certainly capable of reading the scripture yourself, but I, the, it's really the whole chapter is what the focus is, but two couple of scriptures that I want to really emphasize. Verse 5 says, not that we ourselves, in ourselves, are adequate to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And then verse 18 says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, that as from the Lord, the Spirit. Oh, there's so much in those passages of Scripture. But again, I've just kind of pulled out some seven C's. I like, you know, to alliterate a little bit. It helps in the teaching. It helps in the learning. Number one, I mentioned the word commended. Paul affirms in his humility that he knew who he was, that he had been commended by God, and what God had commended to him was the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The quality of our lives uh, I mean, it really, it's defined or is defined so often by the individual themselves. God has called us to be true, competent ministers of the grace that he has given to us. And Paul certainly saw himself as that, but also those he was writing to in Corinth, in spite of their difficulties and sensuality and all the things that they struggled with, he recognized they were competent to be able to minister, to serve the grace that God had given. Talks about competent, confidence and competence because we've been qualified by God. One of the things about an open heaven, it's an acknowledgement that, wait a minute, God is not saying to us, you got to perform, you got you, you to be a barking seal before I'm going to give you my blessing. No, he's already given us all blessings in Christ Jesus, and he has made us by his spirit and through his word competent. We are qualified by God. The new covenant, of course, is far superior to the old. The old covenant in the time of Paul was passing away. That ultimate passing away occurred in, the, in 70 AD, and, and we're no longer under that old covenant. It's been fulfilled in Christ. And as such, we are to live from that place of a new covenant believer with a greater glory, a greater presence than what even Moses experienced in his day because the old was fading and transient. The new is permanent and final in Christ. And that's something that we need to remember. We don't have to call God, oh Lord, give me your presence. He's present with us. And he never leaves, he never forsakes. And one of the beauties of that reality is we can then clearly declare there is therefore now, uh, let me see, how much condemnation is there? Oh yeah, not a bit to those that are in Christ Jesus. 
We are now, by his grace, free to live the commandments that Christ gave. And his commandments, of course, especially seen in, in uh, Matthew and in the in his Sermon on the Mount teachings and other places, we recognize that, that, that Jesus not only doesn't condemn us, but he has encouraged us and is lifting us up all the time to be everything that he created us to be. So we are, we are able to live out the commandments, the, the, the commandments to love, the commandments to care, the commandment to forgive, the, all of those things which they're not just suggestions, they are commandments, but he empowers us by his grace to live them. And thus we're constrained, compelled by the love of Christ to take all that he's given us and give it to others, which is really our, our true and complete freedom that we have in Christ. We now live according to the law of Christ, and we live in the, if you will, the clouds of his glory. God is always working in us and through us. And God is working for us to, to be everything he created us to be. And so what does that mean? It means that because in essence we are in Christ, uh, we're able to see him face to face. When? When we worship and as we study God's word, we see him. We can contemplate his wonders. We enter our rest as we enter into his rest. We meditate on his word day and night, and through that process, he changes or transforms us by his grace. That change is what the new creation is all about. If any man be in Christ, he is, not must, not will be, not might be, not we hope he will be. He is a new creation. The old is past. All is new. And that's one of the wonderful things about being under and open and living in an open heaven is we don't have to prove ourselves. Jesus did that for us. We are who he says that we are. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead truly does live within us. Now, he does want us to be fully and completely transformed by the process of renewing our mind, putting off the old, renewing our mind, putting on the new, living out the word which again, he gives us the spirit, he gives us the word, he gives us the church, he gives us leadership to help us in that process. And so now in this day and this time, we, we, we can stand before the Lord open-faced. We're open-faced with open hands, hands that lift toward Jesus, hands that lift toward heaven. But you know, heaven is not necessarily way out there somewhere. It's right here. Because wherever Jesus is, wherever the Spirit is, there is heaven manifested. He wants us to then live with an open heart, open toward others, and especially for the least among us. And, and, and essentially all of that speaks about the open heaven that we live in today. When Jesus came, he brought heaven to earth. When Jesus came, he brought heaven to earth. He came to tabernacle with us. The very tent of meeting where the presence of God was is in Christ and now is in the spirit and is in and through his church, the body of Christ here in the earth. His kingdom has come and his will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, in many ways, that's what the open heaven concept is all about. Even as Jesus promised, you're going to see angels yeah, coming and going. You're going to see God's presence. You're going to see God's power. You're going to see God's purposes fulfilled. But it, it starts by embracing and acknowledging the reality that the kingdom is here, that heaven is open, and God has given us everything that we need to live covenantally with him, but also as true ministers commended by him of the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I, I think you're going to really enjoy Andrew's session. He'll be doing the next one, two, I think three sessions, and then I'll come back and do a couple more on this whole concept of the open heaven. Hey, if you haven't had a chance yet, get a copy of the book, Open Heaven, by myself and Andrew Hopkins. It's available through Vision Publishing. 
we, you know, we're going to give a special price for it. Again, the teaching's free. If you want to share that with your congregation, that would be a wonderful blessing. But hey, enjoy the fact that we live under an open heaven by God's grace, and we live it out each day in his truth. Yes.